Hey folks, I'm here in Arizona and with me is Jim Heffelfinger. Jim is a wildlife science coordinator for Arizona Game and Fish. And you're also the leader of the Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Mule Deer, Deer and Blacktail Working Group. Right, right, yep. We work so, on a lot of Western issues. When, when I'm gonna talk about something like chronic wasting disease, CWD, I bring in smart people like Jim to talk <laughs> about it because here in Arizona, you don't have any documented cases yet. We, do we don't have any cases. And, and as chair of the Mule Deer Working Group, we work with a lot of Western Mule Deer and Blacktail Deer issues, but probably more importantly is that the, the whole Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies also has a whole team of wildlife veterinarians. And so we collaborate a lot. So Jim, me being a hunter, not a scientist like you are, I'm interested, just like I think most of our audience is, of what can we as hunters do to keep CWD either out of a state or at a low prevalence in a right. state. Yeah, right, there's really, I think of it as three categories. Keep it out, keep it low, and keep it local. So absolutely, like Arizona, it's not been detected in the state yet, and so we're in the keep it out mode. We're, we're doing everything we can to try to keep it from being brought into the, into the state. Keeping it low means keeping the percentage of animals, if you have it, keeping the percentage of animals at a low prevalence rate. And there's things that we can do to do that. And then also just to keep it local. So if you have it in a state, you don't want to start moving it around to other parts of the state where it's not been detected before. And so, so hunters can be part of that, that effort to keep it out, keep it low, and keep it local. And the thing that we can do is, in a big part of how we transport our carcasses, our between, say, some spot that has it within a state to a place that doesn't have it, you don't want to transport mm -hmm. skulls and spinal tissue and lymph nodes right. to those places. Or you wouldn't want to go to Colorado that has a high incidence of CWD and bring yeah. a skull or spine or a whole carcass to Arizona. Yeah, that's right. It's in those tissues. So in the meat, packaged meat is fine to transport. Of course, you want to bring your meat home, but it's the, it's the brain and the spinal tissues is where those, those infectious agents called prions will concentrate. And so that's why you see state laws about bringing spinal cord and spinal fluid and, and and brains into the state there. And so that's why getting that meat, getting packaged meat into the state um, is, is something that hunters can do and, and not bring some of those body parts that we know those prions are concentrated in. Yeah, we, what we've done is we've always done this gutless method where we're just taking out meat and some bones. We're taking all the edible portions of the meat, right. but we're leaving the carcass, the spine, the, mm -hmm. the lymph nodes. And then if we do bring a skull, we boil it right there. Right and right. we're not bringing brain or other matter mm -hmm. with us. And sometimes we can't do that. So we leave it with a local taxidermist uh -huh. to take right. care of that issue for us. So we're not bringing it from one place to another. Yep, and, and people think about that. I, I, I shot a deer, a buck in Texas last year, and it was about the second to last day when I was coming home when I realized I gotta boil this thing and not bring it in, not, not bring the brain tissue into the state there. And so people just, it, it's, an, it's a simple thing to just learn what the rules are and then have everybody do their part in, in boiling skulls, boiling skull plates, making sure there's no tissue on, on hides and on capes and bringing just packaged meat with no spinal cord, no uh, spinal, uh, tissue or brain at all into the, into the state. And that's something people can do to keep from spreading that CWD to new areas or even just increasing the amount of infectious material in the environment. We want to keep it low and keep it local and, and keep it out if we can. Yeah, well, for the sake of your wildlife and your budgets, I hope Arizona never gets chronic wasting right. disease. Because that would be nice. My home state of Montana, it's popped up now about four years ago and we're spending tremendous resources and having to change the way we do things right. because of chronic wasting disease. Right, when it's detected in the state, you can't, it's not just business as usual anymore. Now you've got this whole thing, this whole extra thing to fight and throw money at and throw personnel time at to try to monitor and, and detect it in new areas and to try to manage it. So Jim, in addition to the impact that chronic wasting disease has on our wildlife populations, for an agency, the budget impacts of managing chronic right. wasting disease is really taking a toll. Yeah, it's agencies. incredible. We have these conservation dollars that we're using as wisely as we can to help wildlife and conserve wildlife. And then when CWD is detected in the state, normally states already have CWD management plan on the shelf in case it's detected. But when, when that happens, the, a lot of resources, financial resources, personnel time, now just get dumped into CWD management and monitoring. And so it, it's a huge drain on conservation dollars that the agency could be using uh, other ways. And so if, if we have hunters help us 
keep the prevalence low, keep keep it from spreading, that that will eventually that'll save some of these conservation dollars so they can be used for for good things rather than 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 just pouring so much money into monitoring and, and trying to fight CWD spread. Well, the point of all that is we as hunters, all of us have a role to play in this. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take that much effort, that much extra work. Mostly it just takes being aware and being informed mm -hmm. and doing these little things. And hopefully we can yeah. keep it out of Arizona. Right. And in the places where we do have it, we can keep it localized. Right, right. That's the things that, things that you can do a, as a hunter to, to kind of keep the prevalence down and keep it from spreading is, is going to benefit all of our wildlife populations because those conservation dollars can be used for, for everything that we do for wildlife. Yeah. So there you have it folks, chronic wasting disease, do your part. <laughs>